Welcome to Worship at St. John's. I'm so glad that you are here and we can worship together. There are a couple of announcements before we get started. The first one is our sanctuary is going to be open on Easter Sunday and we are so, so, so excited. We will have four worship services starting at sunrise, a 6.30 service, and then an eight o'clock, 9.30, and 11 o'clock service. These last three services will all be the same. That first one at sunrise will be acoustic outdoors. There is an Easter egg hunt the day before Easter, which is April 3rd. It will be at 10 a.m. and there will be lots of fun, lots of Easter eggs for all of the kids to enjoy. So I hope that you will come to St. John's 10 a.m. April 3rd for the Easter egg hunt and on Easter Sunday, please let us know that you are coming to which service you would like. You can sign up at our website, www.stjohnsumctc.org, or you can simply call the church office and let us know your preference. Now, let's turn our hearts, our minds, our souls, our strength, because God alone is worthy for all that we have to give. Good morning, St. John's family. Here's a, a favorite of many, the old rugged cross. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross Till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross And exchange it someday for a crown Oh, that old rugged cross so despised by the world has a wondrous attraction for me for the dear lamb of god left his glory above to bear into dark calvary so i'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last i lay down i will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown in that old rugged cross stained with blood so divine a wondrous beauty I see for twas on that old cross Jesus suffered and died to pardon and sanctify me so I'll cherish the old rugged cross Till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross And exchange it someday for a crown To the old rugged cross I will ever be true its shame and reproach gladly bear then he'll call me someday to my home far away where his glory forever I'll share 
so I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. Welcome to worship. I'm so grateful to be in worship with you all this morning. I miss being here on Sundays, but I know you guys are in awesome hands uh, with Pastor Stephanie. I am so very excited to share what is going on in our community with you all. I don't know if you all are aware, we've been having parking lot worship every Sunday. And as a result of that extension of our ministry, Elmcroft, the uh, assisted living facility next door to us, has been blessed by the parking lot worship. They are able to receive the signal and worship right along with St. John's every Sunday morning. And they have reached out to us to let us know what a blessing it has been to them to refresh their souls, their hearts and minds, to draw them closer to God, to be able to worship with us. And in the spirit of community, they have reached out to us to say, because we've been such a blessing to them, they would like to reciprocate the blessing by joining with us in ministry to stuff our Easter eggs for our Easter egg hunt. How amazingly awesome is that? It is a full circle of blessings and we are so grateful to have that community right that we are called to be community together one in the body of christ and you all get to be a part of that so that is an exciting happening in our community that we just wanted to share with you all now won't you all join me in prayer as we pray for our tithes and offering and the concerns of our community Gracious God, we come to you today with humble hearts and yearning souls. Lord, during the season of Lent, as we journey towards the cross, we cry out. Our hearts, our minds, our souls yearn for you, Father God. As we study your word, and we're doing the 90 days in the Bible, we pray that your Holy Spirit will move amongst us, stir our hearts and minds, draw us closer to you as we feed on your word, that on the other side of Easter, we will be filled with your Holy Spirit. More of you is what we cry out for, Father God, for a fresh touch, a fresh move, amongst us fresh fire lord to fall down amongst us as we journey through this lenten season closer to the cross we remember that we are mere mortals lord as they say the soul is wishing willing but the flesh is weak just like peter lord as he stood in the courts waiting to hear what would happen with you he was willing to be a disciple, but his flesh was weak, and he was afraid, and he denied you. So have we, Father. We've lost our way, and we have denied who we are. We've forgotten who we are. I pray that during the season of Lent, you will remind us who we are and whose we are through the blood of Jesus the Christ, our Lord and Savior, who died for many for the forgiveness of sins. Lord, we pray for a fresh touch of your spirit to move amongst your people, that we can go out bold, remembering that we are beloved and we're called out to share the love that we have gained through Christ. Lord, for those who are suffering amongst us, we pray for a heal and touch right now in the name of Jesus, wherever they are, be it at home, in a nursing home, recovering. We pray for your mighty touch to move in their hearts and minds and soul and strengthen them. For their caregivers, Lord, we pray for continued strength. 
Lord, in our community, as our police officers are suffering in Lamarck from effects of COVID, we pray for a heal and touch to move amongst that department, that the sheriff department has stepped in to help them out. We pray for them to be strengthened as they go about the community, keeping everyone safe. Lord, there are just so many needs, and we know that we can bring them to the foot of the cross and that you are faithful and you are God of more than enough. Lord, these tithes and offering that we bring today during the week, the people that give online, we pray that you will bless them, multiply them, and use them for your kingdom. Through the connection of United Methodist Church, Lord, that will touch hearts, minds, and souls across the globe. All of these things we pray in the precious name of your son, who taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I want to thank Ingrid Clark, our missions director here at St. John's, for being here and leading us in prayer and sharing the news about Elmcroft. Ingrid serves as the pastor at First UMC in Lamarck, and so I thank her for being here today and for all that she does as our missions director here at St. John's. Our scripture reading today comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 14, starting with verse 66 and going to the end of the chapter. May the word of God fall afresh on your ears this day. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she stared at him and said, you also were with Jesus, the man from Nazareth? But he denied it, saying, I do not know or understand what you were talking about. And he went out into the forecourt. Then the cock crowed. And the servant girl, on seeing him, began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again, he denied it. Then after a little while, the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. But he began to curse, and he swore an oath, I do not know this man you are talking about. At that moment, the cock crowed for the second time. Then Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. As we move through this Lenten season, we look within ourselves. We look within our own faults and our own flaws and our own sins, our own mistakes, our own brokenness, so that we see our need for Jesus. We're not looking for anybody else's sin. We're not looking over there. We're looking here. We're not looking for other people's needs for Jesus. We're looking for our own need for Jesus. Today, we see the disciple Peter in the courtyard. Jesus has been arrested. He stands before the high priest Caiaphas. And Peter, for his love of Jesus, and it is such a deep abiding love, wants to stand beside Jesus and be as close as he can. So he's in that courtyard, and he's waiting, and he's listening. We are like Peter. We want to be close to God. We want to be close to Jesus. We want to be known as Jesus' followers. We want to be known in our identity as who we are, that we're believers, that we go to church, that we read our Bibles, that we pray. It's a part of our identity. 
like Peter, we want to believe that we would follow Jesus anywhere. But when push comes to shove, we let things get away in the way of that relationship. Like Peter, we are a mixture. We are a mixture of sinner and saint. These two identities are constantly at war within us. We see this in Peter. He wants to be close to Jesus. He wants to be at Jesus' side. But when his own body, his own self is in danger, he denies Jesus for his own self-preservation. No, I don't know that man. Mm, I think I've seen you with Jesus. Nope. You haven't seen me with Jesus. Mm, Yeah, yeah, I have seen you with Jesus. No, no, you haven't. And you notice that Peter even curses. He puts a curse on himself as proof that he doesn't know Jesus. But yet he has the courage and the love to stay where he is. After the first question, he doesn't flee. There's something, there's this equality of this love for Jesus and this equality for self-preservation that roots him there, but yet grounds him in his own lies to preserve himself. We are Peter. We are Peter all the time. We are those individuals sometimes who go into a group of people or maybe even one person and we just got heard a juicy story on someone else and we can't wait to tell it. But yet after we've told it and we get up from that conversation, we think, why did I just say that? That wasn't my story to tell. Or why did I say all those bad things about that person when we realize we were part of the gossip? Not only were we a part of it, we may have been even the person that started it. Or maybe when we're driving and we come to a stoplight and on the corner is a homeless person and our first thoughts are to pass judgment instead of extending compassion where we hide our eyes instead of meeting someone eye to eye. Or maybe it's when we've just been so fed up that we can't contain our anger any longer and we want to but we just let go and let loose and let words fly that we can never get back and it doesn't matter how many times we apologize it's just that relationship isn't the same anymore because of our words or because of our actions we want to be good We want to be compassionate people. Or what about those times where God encourages us to get outside of our comfort zone and we just say, no way am I going over there to talk to that person or to go over there and be in that situation or enter into someone else's pain. We just rather cover it up and give platitudes and walk away. It's self-preservation so that we don't have to feel pain or we don't have to get involved. We self-preserve our own egos. We self-preserve our own pride. And yet we still want to be close to God. We still yearn for that closeness of God's presence that our that assurance that our prayers are being heard and that our prayers are being answered. That we would be loyal to God to death, our own death, if we had the choice. We would choose to be a martyr. As Ingrid prayed earlier, Our spirit is strong, it has the want to, but our flesh is weak. Our instinct is to self-preserve. That we are in this courtyard 
every single day, yearning to be close to Jesus, to, be, to stand at his side as he bears our, our suffering, as he bears our sins, to catch a glimpse of his eyes on us, of his compassion. And yet, when push comes to shove, we are self-preserving. We can be so very selfish, and we chase after our own desires. We have, all of us have mixed feelings since this whole pandemic started. And the rules are constantly changing, and they've changed again. To mask or not to mask. Everyone's up in arms about our own freedoms. No one can tell, tells me whether I wear a mask or not. I'll wear one when I want to. I won't wear one. It's about our own selfish desires, and we'll even get in arguments about it if someone doesn't agree with which way we land or what we want to do. And we will defend ourselves and our own choices. The beauty of this scripture is that Jesus remains with us even when we don't remain with Jesus. When we start chasing after our own desires, Jesus stays with us in those moments we can't stay with Jesus. When the cock crows, Jesus had planted in Peter's mind you will deny me three times. And so when Peter heard that, he remembered. There are signs all around us of Christ's grace. This reminding that Jesus is with us. God with us always, no matter what. There is nothing that can separate us from the love and grace of God. There is no authority, there is no principality, there is no decision. There is nothing that can separate us from Christ's presence, from God's presence with us. And when that cock crowed, when that rooster crowed, Peter remembered. He remembered why he was there. And he saw his own self-preservation, his own desire. As Christ was giving up his life, Peter was trying to save his own. And Peter was ashamed. He buried his head in his hand and he wept bitterly and he ran into the night. Sometimes we get buried in our own shame and our own guilt we know we know our sin is our own it belongs to us it is our choice our choices our life but in reality it is only christ that can give life and life abundant and christ is constantly beckoning us to the cross again and again and again to receive that forgiveness, to be reminded. That's what the season is about. Not just to remind us of our need, but that our need is being met. The rooster is crowing for every single one of us. Remember, remember, remember your need in Jesus and remember that it is being met. Your homework this week is to think about those dual components in yourself, that you are a saint as well as a sinner. 
and that your struggles are struggles that every single human being on the planet feels. To give that mixture of who you are, all that you are, over to God for the work of Christ in your own life. Let that be your prayer this week. As we each struggle with our own sin, may we reach out with an open heart to Christ's presence, meeting each one of us where we are and meeting our need. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you so much for joining in worship today. I hope this was a blessing to you. Uh, to you. 
please connect with us. Let us know that you're here. Comment on the bottom if you are on Facebook. Like us on YouTube. Um, show us that you're present because we are so glad that you are here. As we journey through Lent together and we look towards Easter, may the presence of God be intense in your life. May your eyes be open to the signs that Christ is working within you that the Spirit of God is with you as the Spirit of God is with each one of us so that you may take the kingdom of God wherever you go. Be a blessing. Amen. Together, it means, I don't like that second, nope. Take two. Sorry, whoever's editing. Oh, good morning, St. John's family. <laughs>